So what does walking by faith mean in the business world? I believe when I don't see it. Lord, are you going to supply this month? I don't see it, but I live by faith. So we live by faith, not by sight. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says the following, without faith it is impossible to please God. I want to please God. Well, live by faith. That's why sometimes, like, Lord, are you going to supply this month? Lord, are you going to supply this month? Yeah, I'm going to supply. I just want to see if you, if you can live by faith. I've asked the Lord, why don't you just supply all the needs? Then I don't have to ask you again. You see, then you're not going to use your faith and then you're not going to please me. So I'm going to let you always stay in a dimension of believing, trusting the Lord. So what does walking by faith mean? Just write this down. Walking by faith means the following. Believing when I don't see it. That's walking by faith. So what does walking by faith mean in the business world? I believe when I don't see it. Lord, are you going to supply this month? I don't see it, but I live by faith. So when I say you walk by faith, what does that mean, team? It means we live even, or I believe even if I don't see it. Are we going to buy that house? Yes. Do we have the money? No. Are, will God supply? Yes. Why? Because we see it. We believe it by faith. So believing or walking by faith means believing when I don't see it. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 11 says that now faith or faith is being the sure. Look at this. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for. Am I going to sell that car? Am I going to sell that house? Am I going to get the deals? I don't see it. But my faith is I'm believing without a shadow of a doubt it's going to take place. Number two is obeying when God, obeying God when I don't understand it. In other words, what is walking by faith? I obey God even when I don't understand it. God, you say I must clear my account? How does that work? Just obey Go and buy that for the church. Do that for the church. Do that for the kingdom. I don't understand. I don't just do it. Obedience is better than the sacrifice. And God honors obedience. I'm telling you today. If you are obedient to him, God will do great things in your life. Amen. Um, there's so many scriptures on this. You can make the note of this. Hebrews 11 verse 7 and 8. By faith, Noah built an ark. Look at, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah built an ark to save his family. He obeyed God. He warned him about something that would happen. So by faith, he built the ark. I love this because, look at this, he obeyed God who warned him about the things that, that had never happened before. It never rained before. It never was never a flood. But he obeyed God. God said, build an ark. What is that? How does that work? What is that? Never seen a flood. Don't know what it is. What's a boat? But I'm going to obey. Nevertheless, I'll obey your word. Doesn't make sense, but I'm going to do it. And when he did it, when the, when the floods came, he was saved. The same with Abraham in verse 8. It was by faith. It was faith that made Abraham obey God when God called him to go to the country God promised him. He left his own country without knowing where he was going. So by faith, God says, you need to go there. I don't know. Who do I know there? I don't know what to do there. Just go. Obey what I'm telling you. When God called us here, I didn't know anybody. Didn't know how we're going to start this. Now our staff is bigger than the day we started the church with. Pastor Santi is here. She can witness of that. When we started this ministry in my lounge, Back then, 21 Rates Avenue, that first day, there was little people there. But today, like I said, the staff is bigger than the old church back then. We obeyed, and look what God is doing. Just obedience. The third thing is, you need to persist when you don't feel like it. Persistence or persisting when you don't feel like it. What is walking by faith means? We always hear the term. 
it. I believe it even if I don't see it. I obey even if I don't understand. I persist even when I don't feel like it. There are days, let me tell you, that I don't want to serve God, serve the church, give. It's normal, I think. Maybe I'm just not a good pastor. But that's just how I feel sometimes. But you keep persisting, getting on the platform, getting back in my prayer room, getting back in the word of the Lord, bringing the seed again. You know, that's what we do. That's how we live. That's how we practice these things. So we persist, we keep on going, even when we don't feel like it. Um, so what is faith? Faith is the things we hope for, evidence of things we don't see. Number four, announcing in advance before I have it. What is walking by faith means? I announce I'm getting that million. I'm getting that thing. You can, you can ask my children and, and mom. That's how we live. When we believe God for something, we start confessing it in our home. I don't know how many times a day. That you hear we're getting that car. That you hear we're getting that, that, that deal. That you hear we're getting that house. The, the house that we lived in, we did exactly the same. We moved in there with a bond and we just started confessing. That you hear this house is paid off. That you hear God is going to work in somebody's heart to pay this house off. That you hear we don't owe anybody anything. That you hear four months and all of a sudden the breakthrough came. That's by faith. Seed in the ground, seed in that property, seed everywhere. And we started believing, started believing, started believing, started announcing by faith it's going to come. Before I have it, I already announce it. So that is living by faith. What is walking by faith? I announce it before I even have it. Maybe you can call it a vision if you want to, but it's more a faith talk. You have the car. I have that job. I have that deal. I own all the restaurants in South Africa. You understand? And, and you start confessing this. Do you really own them? Not in the natural yet, but they come in. And I'm so convinced of that, that I actually live it and believe it and, and walk in that dimension. So I announce in advance before I have it. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 22, it says, It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, confidently spoke of God bringing his people out of Egypt. He was so sure of it that he commanded them to carry his bones with them when they left. Think about that. Joseph said, we can't, we're going to get out of here. But they're still in, in bondage. He says, I'm so convinced we're going to go out of here that please take my bones to the promised land. If, and I mean, he died and his bones went there. He was convinced of the promises of God. How convinced are you? Never let that language come, oh, we're not going to make it. We don't speak like that. That shouldn't be in your household. I don't know if I'm going to make it this year. As, you know, when your children speak, no, we cancel those words. You're going to make it. You're going to end up in the top 10. You're going to be the prefect. You're going to be the head, whatever. You start declaring these things. You have to declare it. Amen. Um, let's go to number five. Giving when I don't have it. I, giving when I don't have it. I think this is one of the biggest principles that I can teach you today. People give because they have. It's when there is scarcity. <laughs> I don't know why God does that. But when there's scarcity and you give then, it's like <laughs> miracles happen. Um, it's probably like Genesis chapter 27. In the time of famine, Isaac sowed. And in the same year, he received a hundredfold return and he began to prosper until he became very prosperous. And then it says there, until he became prosperity, which is very powerful. But he sowed in famine. He didn't sow in abundance. He sowed in famine. So when, never come to the point where you say, I can't give. That shouldn't be your language. If, I can't, if you can't give now, you make a vow to God. But never say, I don't have money. Never let those things come out of mouth. Say, I make a vow that by the end of the month I'll sow. By this I'm going to, I'm committed to that. I commit to that. Make vows to God because that's your credit line in heaven. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 2, 8 verse number 2 says this. 
Because of their great joy, they gave even more than they could afford. Look at that. They even gave more than they could afford because they were not limited by their wallets. They gave more. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Honor the Lord by giving to God first of all your income, all your income, all the businesses that you have, everyone gives. Amen. And that's how we honor the Lord. Number six, thanking God before you receive it. So how do I live by faith? Let's go through this. Flow with me in the back. How do I walk by faith? I, number one, believe when I don't see it. Number two, I obey God when I don't understand it. Number three, I persist when I don't feel like it. Number four, I announce in advance before I get it. Number five, I give when I don't have. Number six, I thank God before I receive it. Thank God I have that contract. Thank God I have that property. Thank God I have that breakthrough. Thank God I'm going to get a deal. Thank God we have all these things. That's Thankfulness is very powerful. I've seen this now in, in, in my life the past couple of months. You know, you give and then people are not uh, grateful or thankful for that. Guess what? Do you feel like, mm, I'm not going to give again to that person? Isn't it right? Because thankfulness opens the heart for more. Am I right? Thankfulness. God works like that. Every blessing you get, you thank Him. Everything you have, thank Him. Yes, you may not have the big car and the big house, but what you have right now, thank Him for that. And He increases and increases and increases and increases. That's how God works. So thanking God before you receive it. Mark chapter 11 verse 24 says this, when you pray and ask for something, believe that you receive it and you will be given what you ask for so that your joy may be full. Amen. And then lastly is trusting if I don't get it. Now I want to read you the scripture. Hebrews 11, verse 39 to 40, and we're done. But check this scripture. They were all commended of their faith. Yet none of them received what have been promised. Stop there. Just go back. What is my principle? Trusting, even if I don't get it. Just think about it. How do I walk by faith? I'm trusting God, even if I don't get it. The Bible says, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what has been promised. That doesn't even make sense. But look what the next verse says. Since God has planned something better for them. There you go. So Lord, I'm asking for this contract. I didn't get it. Why didn't I get it? Because God has something better for you. Better. It doesn't make sense. That's walking by faith. Why did this thing didn't work out? Because I've got something better for you. That is walking by faith. Trusting when I don't get that deal, that there's something better. I didn't get the house. There's something better. Didn't get the car. Something better. Didn't get the husband. Something better. (laughs) Didn't get the, the deal. Something better. It's always better. That's the promises of God. These people have had a promise, they didn't see it fulfilled because God had something better. If I can give you this, if the door doesn't open, there's something better, always. And be okay with trusting God in that. I was believing God for that contract. There's something better. Definitely something better in store for you. Amen. To receive the word this morning, family, praise the Lord.